Man, we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight in Vancouver, all my real fans. The following is a hockey podcast out of Vancouver and Surrey, British Columbia. It'll only consist of a lot of pup talk and even more BS, or in actual words, banter and satire. Enjoy, and as always, go Canucks, go. Your Vancouver Canucks are the most boring team in the NHL. What? More on that next year. All locked on, Canucks. Why are you so dark, you asshole? Come on, man. Don't be a dumbass. You're Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, co-host of Locked On Canucks, and also a Canucks writer for Daily Hive Vancouver before we dive into today's episode, we got to thank you for tuning into Locked On Canucks because guess what? It is your Canucks every damn day. Again, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Shout out to Locked On. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you go subscribe or follow us wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Before we get into things, I got to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download that Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase. Again, the Vancouver Canucks have been better this season than anyone could have hoped for. Even the most optimistic fan could have hoped for. But guess what? They're boring, okay? We're going to touch on that very shortly. Because oh, there's a, there's a crazy stat about how the Canucks Yo, you gotta are. You got to relax, dude. Come on, man. NHL. Okay, just hear me out. Hear me you out. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get into it. Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, well aware of that. Thanks for reminding me, though, pal. <laughs> also, uh, we'll, we'll try to keep it more positive. Talk a little Vasily Pod Colson, okay? Uh, breaking down his game, what we've seen from him since being recalled, because the guy's been solid, okay? Points haven't been there, but the guy has been solid. And then we're going to end the show doing a little Begsy versus Bowen, okay? Boom, bam. Begsy versus Bowen. You can let us know in the comments uh, who you think wins our little debate at the end of the show. Uh, but before we get to any of that, let me introduce my co host. They call him the latest guy on the program. Kyle Bowen, how you doing, brother? Yep, the lightest guy on the program, Kyle Bowen, doing his thing alongside Trevor Beggs for another conversation about your Vancouver Canucks. Ten games left. The playoffs are there. Yeah, we didn't clinch yesterday, but it's going to happen. Uh, we'll celebrate at Scott Road eventually. And man, oh, man, here's another reminder to join the Discord, okay? The link in the bio below. The Discord was going off last night. A lot of emotion uh, during that game. Last night, a lot of physicality, and thank God, right, the hockey gods, that there was a lot of physicality in that game because that game sucked. That game was the worst game ever. Yo, we sent someone and uh, one of their guests to that game last night. Uh, we gave away tickets, and to that person, sorry for wasting your time, man, for real. That was, uh, no, 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 for, like, for honestly, for like 54 minutes, that game really sucked. It was exactly what you don't want hockey to be uh, to be about. Real talk, it, oh. dude, it sucked, man. It's just shut up, Trevor. Come on, man. I know, I know. We're gonna talk about oh, that's a playoff round of hockey, a tough matchup like that, bro. Playoffs. Come on. Both teams combined for what forty-one shots, and I know you have a pretty interesting stat about that specifically coming up here in ten seconds because I can see it in your eyes. The fire is burning. The dark guy's coming out. But uh, yeah, that game just that game just sucked, man. Anyways, Bexy, uh, can you bring up that stat of involving uh, Canucks games that uh, state the obvious? And that's uh, damn. More often than not, they're playing in some pretty low event games. The Vancouver Canucks again. There's an argument that they're the most boring team in the NHL. And when I say that, I'm talking about shots on goal. Now, in terms of combined shots for and shots against. The Canucks are the most boring team of the NHL. When you watch oh. a Canuck game this season on average, uh, you're seeing the lowest amount of average shots in an NHL game. So I got the numbers here at even strength, and I'm just combing through it overall too, and, and they're pretty similar. But I think even strength does a good job of taking special teams out of the picture. But no matter which way you look at it, the Canucks um, at even strength this season have you know an average of 26.7 shots on goal per game, and they've allowed an average of 26.8 shots on goal. Um, both of those are among the league's best and league work stats. So they've actually allowed the fifth fewest shots on goal, but they've generated the seventh fewest shots on goal. So they're at either end of the spectrum. 
But either way, the Canucks, again, in terms of combined shots, foreign shots against, have the lowest amount of shots on net in a Vancouver Canucks game. Therefore, my uh, my bold take with them, them, them being the most boring team in the NHL. And honestly, Kyle, this is one of my biggest gripes about the Canucks right now. We've talked for really the better part of a month and a half, two months, about how good this defense has been, right? You know, you look at this team since February 1st, they've allowed the least amount of shots on goal in the NHL. Since March 1st, they've actually allowed barely over 20 shots a game. Like, we've gone a whole month where the Canucks have barely allowed over 20 shots a game, which is pretty unreal stuff. And, you know, they, they've been smothering opponents, you know, all throughout That's the past unreal. few games here. Um, but I think that stellar defensive effort is masking the fact that they just don't create a lot offensively. And I think last night was a perfect example. Yeah, you're playing a Kings team that, you know, has that good structure. They, they really defend the neutral zone well. They defend the middle of the ice well. JT Miller said post game that you know the Cucks really do struggle to get to the middle of the ice against the LA Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, but just it's been a trend throughout the season, right? Early on, it's like they're getting all these goals, but they're one of the lowest shooting teams in the NHL. And now they're shooting slightly more if you look at the past month and a half, but they're still about you know the tenth fewest shots in the league. And I think some of that luck that they had earlier this season is starting to catch up to them a little bit. Um, so Kyle, I, maybe I'll throw it to you. Do you think the Canucks' biggest issue right now is the fact that they don't shoot the puck enough? Yeah, it's 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 frustrating. It's um also something that's been happening since the beginning of the season. I know uh the uh, most popular player on the Vancouver Canucks in October and November was uh PD uh PDO. I was about to say PDG, but it was PDO, right? So we've kind of, we've kind of been accustomed to this real talk, but recently, and I brought this up. I think after the game on Saturday, right, we played the Calgary Flames, and it was another game where I felt as if the Canucks left a lot on the table, five on five. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, but Begsy, I'm going to throw it back to you because, again, you're the wise guy. You're the smart guy here. I don't think this is a Taka thing. I don't think this is uh, the team listening to Taka and Taka's telling them, yo, low event hockey is going to get us dubs in the playoffs. I really don't think that's the case because, again, Taka told the media before the LA Kings game, that the Canucks need to stop holding on to pucks against this team. And what did they do yesterday? They held on to pucks. I guess what I'm trying to say is, why do you think the Vancouver Canucks and this crop of players, all their all-stars, are so determined to be so guaranteed with their shots? You know, they're always looking for the perfect shot. Now, keep in mind, we're talking a lot of ish about a team that's probably top five in goals four. They're still number one in goals differential. Uh, but I think we're only doing so because you and I but both believe that with this crop of offensive all-stars on this team, there's another level to this team where they can be really good defensively and also kill you. Just kill you offensively. So, yeah, why do you think the Canucks are just trying to be so perfect with every shot they're taking? I think it's because that's what's worked for them in the past, right? We've mm-hmm. We've seen a team, especially with the firepower at the top of this lineup, where their bread and butter has been – their ability to get to the dangerous spots of the ice and make the most of their chances. I mean, even going back to last season, the Canucks had pretty high shooting percentages as well. So that, it's just that they were giving up so much that none of that really mattered. But what's worked for this team has been the ability to rely on elite talent, get shots from dangerous areas in the ice, and for the most part, capitalize on those chances at a pretty high rate. So when they've been so successful doing that, it's sometimes it's kind of hard to change back the other way where – you need to maybe take more of a volume approach in terms of getting shots on goal. And we just haven't seen that from this Canucks team for the most mm-hmm. part. There is a hesitancy just to throw the puck on net and see what happens. And, you know, we talked about a couple episodes ago, shout out to the everydayers. They know this, but Connor Garland actually is one of the highest shooting Canucks this season. I believe he actually mm-hmm. has fired the highest amount of shots on goal at even strength. He's created the most rebounds at even strength. So Garland is one of the few players on this team that I see that has that mentality of, get the puck on net and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas a, a part of that is him playing on the third line and maybe just a different, different mentality. But I do think some of the other Canucks need to be more like, like Connor Garland, just get the puck on net, get it to the dirty areas, crash it and see what happens. I mean, they've, they've seemed to have deviated mm-hmm. from that a bit. Yeah. It, it, okay. It's, it's some of that. Then it's also uh, some of this. Okay. I, I, I have a couple stats from uh, Jeff Patterson. Okay. Uh, you know, J Pat, I feel as if online, yo, he takes a lot of hate, man, for being super negative. Bro, this guy is one of the best in the West Coast, okay? Anyways, he has this stat, okay? The Canucks, through their first 41 games, averaged 3.9 goals per game, okay? That's 160 goals total. In their last 31 games, they have 91 goals. And they've dropped down a whole goal. A whole goal in their last 31 games. 2.94 goals per game. 
He also has this other stat, which has a lot to do with it. And it goes back to this whole Lindholm thing and needing Lindholm in the top six. Again, this team traded 24 assets for Elias Lindholm, okay? Put him in the top six. Look at this stat, okay? Canucks' JT Miller is sitting on 90 points and is 10th in NHL scoring. And his most common line mates are PDG, Pew Suter, Ilya Mikheyev, and Anthony Beauvillier. I guess what I'm trying to say is, bro, they need more punch in their top six with their more fun players to really ignite this offensive engine that they haven't ignited consistently all season long outside of the of the lotto line doing its thing in the East Coast. You know what I'm saying? That top six, Pedersen, Besser, Miller, and Lindholm, and Hoaglander, they got to have more fun. They got to have everyone on board that, yeah, you know, you got to look after your own zone and whatnot and be committed to defense and all the, the structure and the X's and O's, but man, oh man, open it up. And yesterday, a huge opportunity to open it up against the LA Kings. Bro, the Canucks are a way better team than the Kings, in my opinion. I think the Canucks had the puck quite a bit in yesterday's game. It was kind of even, but the Canucks had chances to just do more damage. But there they were still trying to just perfect all their shots. And I think one way for a group like that to have fun is to establish more offensive zone faceoffs, establish more rebound attempts, just put things on net, get that mojo going and keep LA on their heels, AKA don't fall into the trap. Don't play their game. Uh, there needs to be that mindset amongst the players. And I think one player that can really help shift the game. And when they're playing games like that is Quinn Hughes. No, straight up, man. He has the puck so much yeah. in every game. And what's he doing against the LA Kings? Bro, this guy's holding onto the puck for the whole effing game, bro. It's like, yo, put some stuff on net. Yo, because I think if he does that, he's the captain of the team. It might trickle down to the rest of the guys. Like, yo, let's just do that. Let's just get in, get go, go hard to the paint, put some shots on net, crash the net. And, and maybe that could start, again, putting LA on their heels and opening up the game. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And, you know, we, it's interesting that you say Quinn Hughes holding on to the puck a lot because that's kind of what worked against the Kings three weeks ago, right? Uh, a lot of it was, again, holding the puck in his own zone and, you know, trying to break that 1-3-1 that the Kings uh, perfect so well. Um, but it just didn't work to the same extent last day. And like you said, I think when you start squeezing the stick, there's not that, you know, that instinct to throw it on goal. You are trying to make the perfect play to an extent. So mm. we're going to see what happens. Again, the Canucks and Kings very well can be to the playoffs. They're going to play one more time in Bring LA it. on Saturday, Bring April it. 6th. We'll see if uh, any changes happen before then. Um, Kyle, I talked about, you know, this being some holes in the top six. And, and maybe let's think about this question for the other side. Can Pod Colson be an uh, answer maybe. for the top six? Okay. Save it for the other side. Okay. Locked on Canucks. You got Trevor Bates, Kyle Bowen here. We're going to talk a little bit silly Pod Colson and his season so far up in the NHL uh, when we get uh, back for break. But before we do that, let's shout out our friends over at Sleeper. All right, Canucks fans. You know, even though the Canucks didn't make the playoffs last night, the team is still tied for first overall in the NHL. Let's go, baby. You want to be the best at something else? Make sure you go try playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is my number one choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, and especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether studs like JT Miller, Vasily Postrajan, or Casey DeSmith will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, desaves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Canucks fans. You could win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match woo, on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers, terms used for details and locational availability. We back, we back talking about your Vancouver Canucks, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, and the people, man, at the Locked On Podcast Network doing that thing and selling that culture and giving you your Canucks every day. Hit the like button and subscribe if you're enjoying the program. And man, oh man, if you do that, you're going to make our loved ones happy, okay? For real. 
Every light gets us closer and closer to taking our girlfriends go-karting and to Cactus Club every week. Oh, you want the thrill, man. You want the thrill. You got to spice it up, man. You can't just take them to a restaurant. You, you know, you got to switch it up, man. What if you just hit up your, your, your wife right now and be like, you know what? You know what, baby? We're going to drop the kids off on Tuesday to our parents' house, and I'm taking you go-karting. Boom. It's a great idea. Boom. I love it. It's a great idea. Crash and boom. Hey, speaking of crash and boom, Pod Colson, man. Ooh, that's oh, a segue. Is he, is he uh, playing like a top 10 pick? I don't know about that. But is he playing like Rafi Torres? Sort of. Sort of. Less dirty. Oh, but yo, man. no, every, yo, bro, every single shift involving that guy, more often than not, involves a hit. And, bro, you know the playoffs, man. I know you haven't been there in a long time. You know what's coming during uh, Pot Colson's first shift in a game in the playoffs. Because I think he's going to crack the lineup based on him being a bit of an outlier on this team. Because nobody really plays like that on this lineup. Real talk. Every shift, he's just laying out the body, trying to do so. And you know what? It kind of led to a Lafferty goal last night. Anyways, how surprised are you in Pod Colson's play? And how are you going to find a way to tell the people that because of the way he's playing, he's kind of earned an opportunity to be maybe the spark that that top six needs? Yeah, I mean, it's there's it's been a problem all season, right? But there's been spots in the top six that are available. And I think there's mm -hmm. one there right now, especially alongside Miller and Besser. Look. Uh, Paul Coles, I think one of the reasons you and I wanted to talk about him, Kyle, is that, you know, especially over the last three games, I think he's, his game has just gotten better and better. And mm -hmm. we talked about him since he came in to, uh, during that first game against the Anaheim Ducks, um, that he, you know, he looks solid. Like the, the rookie Paul Colson who had the details down, was good at both ends of the ice. That was there. That was evident. And I think it's been evident since he's come back to the lineup. And you talk about the hits too, man. Look at that. Look at this game log from Pod Colson. You know, Damn. he had he had one hit combined in his first two games uh, mm -hmm. against Anaheim and LA. Since then, he's had at least three hits every game, but on most nights, he's had at least five hits. The guy's been physical. And, mm -hmm. you know, you saw last night, this is going to show up on the stat sheet, but, you know, he does a good job of boxing the Kings defender out so Lafferty can make that drive to the net, you know. The Canucks, again, like you said, kind of held on to the puck for too much the last night. But because of that play Pod Coles made, Lafferty had the ability to hold on to the puck and mm -hmm. then score a pretty highlight real goal. So when I look at Pod Coles right now, I would love to see more of him in the top six. But Ooh. here's the thing. There's got to there's gotta be a bottom line with Pod Coles. And, and I, yeah. I almost hate saying this because it's not all about goals and assists. But it is. if you're going to play higher up the lineup, you got to be producing. And I think... Paul Coles right now through the first, what, 10 games now since being recalled has been solid, right? We've we've liked what we've seen from him. But again, you're talking about a guy who in, in 10 games has one assist. No, two right? assists. Did, did, did he not two get assist, credited right. for assist for Lafferty's goal yesterday? I think he, he made a play on that uh, that goal. I don't you know, think I mean, he got an assist yesterday. No way. They removed it, eh? I don't know. Yeah, no, right right now, I'm looking I at the game log. He doesn't have an assist from last night. No, I, honestly... After Lafferty scored, Sportsnet did show that he got an assist. And I was wondering, like, okay, like, what, when did he touch the puck? How did Lafferty pick it up? Blah, blah, blah. But all in all, maybe Sportsnet made that mistake because Pod Colson deserved that assist, man. I felt yeah. as if that was, like, kind of at the end of his shift, like at the 45-second mark, the 50-second mark of that shift. Yet mm -hmm. his ability to not give up on plays and, quite honestly, do whatever it takes to stand out in this lineup is pretty important to this team now. We also did see yesterday a couple things at the end of the game. We saw Zadorov in front of the net when this team was trying to tie the game, but we also saw put Pod Coles in there too. And, bro, he was an inch away from scoring a goal to tie that game up. So what I'm trying to say is Tockett believes in him. He really does. Tockett wants him to succeed. You know, he's mentioned in September that he practically loves the guy because he's one of those one of those first guys on the ice, last guy off the ice type of guys. He practices hard. He does his thing. He's going to get an opportunity the rest of the way here. And I'm curious to see if he's actually a top six player when Joshua comes back. Straight up. Are we going to see Teddy Bluger, Dakota Joshua, and Connor Garland? I hope so. A fluid line, a line that generates shot after shot after shot. They need that. They need that. Are we going to see Lindholm, Pedersen, and Hoaglander? Probably. Probably. And are we going to see Pot Colson with JT Miller and Brock Besser? I think so which is risky business because this guy really hasn't quote unquote deserved that spot with a 90 point player in JT Miller. But there's an opportunity there. There really is. Cause we just mentioned it. 
JT Miller, for the most part this season, has played with Bovillier, Mikheyev, PDG, and Pius Suter. A revolving door. And let's say Pod Colson can fill up that spot and bring justice to, uh, you know, that responsibility. Then you're looking at a fourth line like Mikheyev, Lafferty, and Pew Suter, which, in my opinion, is really, really, really good. Straight up. Now, Trevor. Yeah. Ask you again if we're talking about the top six. I told you, man. Actually, you know what? You were more bringing this up just to side with Tockett's philosophy regarding Lindholm being a center in the bottom six. But we yeah. saw it yesterday. Again, there was another game in which the Canucks allowed less than 20 shots, and Lindholm was not in the lineup. Pio Suter was used as a bottom six center, which means, in my opinion, proof of concept. Proof of concept. This team's well structured, structured enough for a guy like Pio Suter to replace Lindholm and still get the job done defensively. The Canucks don't need to spend energy in their last 10 games and into the playoffs worrying about how to raise the floor of this team. Oh, Lindholm, a bottom six center. Oh, that's look, that, look at our depth, bro. F the depth. Let's raise the ceiling. There's another level to the Vancouver Canucks, and I think it only can get unlocked because we're at game 70, and the Canucks, five on five, for the most part this season, have been kind of boring the whole way through. If they want to unlock the next level, it's all on Elias Lindholm being a dominant top six player. Am I on to something here? Because I think I am. The X factor for your Vancouver Canucks. Uh, I do love I do love throwing out the term X factor. Speaking of X factors, man, that disco ball behind your, your head, that's an X factor right okay. there, man. It's, Trevor, it's elevated you, you, performance. Stay stay focused, Trevor. Did, did you notice any difference? Like, did you notice that Lindholm no. was not in the lineup yesterday? You didn't. No, I didn't. I, I did not. And I, six, I, but you missed him in the top six, potentially, if, like, let's say it was going. That was a game in which the Canucks needed their top six to take over. But I think it's not the hardest thing to realize that it may not happen game in and game out because, again, the chemistry within the top two lines has been all over the place where they kind of have to rely on just crashing and banging instead of just being fluid and having fun. We've said it time and time before, and uh, shout out to the everydayers here on Locked on Canucks. They know this, but we've said said it, that Lindholm should not be your third-line center. It is, like you said, Kyle, uh, a move that raises the floor, but you know the floor on this team is fine. It's about raising the ceiling. It's about being mm-hmm. the best team in the NHL. It's about winning the Stanley Cup. And having Lindholm as your third and fourth line center, I don't think you or I, neither of us think that's really the recipe to do it. Talk, it loves it. We've mm-hmm. we've talked about that on the show, but you know you want to raise the ceiling of this team. Lindholm should be in the top six. And I think he learned that last you know, yesterday. I, he learned it yesterday. I, I hope it, so. I hope yeah. so. I, and I mean, it's it's easy too when you're you're a head coach and you're really try to figure out the details of what to do with your lineup. You know, Lindholm is one of the only right shot centers on this team, aside from Lafferty, right? But Lafferty's faceoff percentage is like 35%. It's pretty brutal. Mm. So I, I think there is it's definitely a desire to have Lindholm play center. But he can just take faceoffs on his uh, offside when when needed, if he's on the Pedersen line, right? I mean, you could have Lindholm take faceoffs and still play wing. So yeah. there's some nuances to it as well, but I do think you got to have one home with the star players. You got to have one home in your yeah. top six, whether it's at the Miller line, whether it's at the Pedersen line, raise the ceiling of this team. Mm-hmm. And uh, who knows, man, maybe there's a top six come playoff time with both Lindholm and, and Paul Colson as a part of it. Um, wow. again, there's, there's depth up forward right now, um, but we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out. 10 games to go, baby. Look at this comment. Okay. I've said it before. And this comes from Steven or Stefan Johansson from Sweden. Okay. I've said it before. The future is so bright. I have to wear shades. This is the year the Canucks win it all. Bro, I still believe, baby. I still believe in the Canucks, even after a game like yesterday. I really do. Because look at what they've done defensively, okay? I know on this episode, we're talking about raising the ceiling and wanting more offense. And man, oh man, it's a bit of a red flag that this team has still held on to the PDO title the whole year through. And quite frankly, are getting better slash worse at it, if you get what I'm saying, uh, during our last 31 games. But at the same time, if they still do the things the same way, quite honestly, there's still a recipe for success for the Vancouver Canucks because they're dominating defensively, like dominating defensively. Yeah. They're going to be in games. But I again, I do think to ensure some level of dominance in the playoffs, like some level of fluidity, I, I actually mean what I say when I say this. If the Canucks offense in the top six, five on five can get better, I de- definitely think that the Vancouver Canucks are right up there with Colorado as the best team in hockey. I really do. But they have to unlock that, again, fluidness and creativity amongst Pedersen and Miller and their line mates. Anyways, Locked on Canucks, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs. We got one more segment on the show. Uh, Beggsy, man. 
I love you, brother. I love you, brother. I love you too, buddy. Thanks for keeping me on track. I got distracted by your disco ball. Uh, hey, no ad read for me. What's going on? Unbelievable. So we're going to take a quick pause here, and we'll be back on the other side here on Locked On Canucks. People, people, we back on this side, talking about your Vancouver Canucks. Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen, one love to you and you and you and you. Reminder to join the Discord for more Canucks conversation, for real. Uh, we just talking ish down there, right? It's a safe place, right? PC free, but it's still a safe place, for real. Link in the bio, okay? Hit the like button, subscribe. It really does help us out a lot on the YouTube side. And leave us a good review on the podcast side, okay? For real. Dude, we're, we're a couple more reviews away from being a three-star podcast on the audio side, man. You know what, Trevor? Sometimes, because, again, we're, we're getting the low ratings because the voice. You know, we keep getting comments about my voice. And I just want to apologize to you, man, that I didn't pick up uh, my sp smoking habit that I said I would do last year to instill a bit of a voice change going into the playoffs this year so we have a better chance on the audio side. So I, I do want to apologize for not, uh, again, starting up uh, my sp smoking habit and making the podcast better. That's, hey, that's okay, man. No need to apologize. It's hard to smoke 47 cigarettes a day like I do. Just kidding, kids. <laughs> Don't smoke. Stay in school. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, let's uh, let's run the segment before we get to the comments. And uh, a lot of the comments going off today, too, man. We got an educated fan base on this side, for real. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's fight, man. Who would win in a fist fight? Trevor Baggs or Kyle Bown? And who's going to win in this argument? Uh, talking about the power play here on Locked on Canucks. Let's do this. Begsy. First bow. Okay, Trevor, what do you want to talk about? You have some ideas about the power play. Who's going to be the fifth member? There's one easy answer here for me, in my opinion, because, again, we traded 47 assets for Lindholm, but I, I, I think you're going to say Niels Hoaglander, right? That's what you're going to do here, aren't you? <laughs> Oh, uh, you know me so well, buddy. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with Nils Hoglander. And honestly, Elias Lindholm wouldn't even be my second guy right now. What? I think. I think he has to earn his spot on that power play. Uh, I think the Canucks have shooters on that power play already. To me, I'm I'm struggling to see Lindholm's usefulness on PP one. I How? think he might be the guy to quarterback PP two. To be honest with you, on PP one, what they need is a guy down below the goal line oh. who can bang pucks in. And last night they had Pew Suter there. And whoop you do Pew Suter's had some moments, but Nils Hoaglander is the guy to have below oh the goal God. line by the net, cleaning you... up rebounds on the power play. And honestly, okay. my second choice would be Dakota Joshua. Uh, what's, oh once God. Dakota Joshua's back, I would have Lindholm on PP2. So I'm going Nils Hoaglander as my top candidate to be alongside Vester Hughes, Miller, and Pedersen on PP1. And Dakota Joshua would be my backup. Enough with Pew Suter, uh, Elias Lindholm, until he earns his opportunity. I don't want him there either. Okay, so we're going to completely ignore the fact that, you know, you made it clear that we need someone below the below the blue uh, the the line to to play in front of the net around the power play. We got a lot of shooters. Just move Brock Besser into the bumper spot. Boom, bam, blah, blah, blah. Right? Let's get someone else in front of the net. How about the guy who scored two power play goals against Carolina in his his first game as a Vancouver Canuck? Uh, where was he? He was tipping pucks in front of the net. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Where has he been dude, since then? Where has he I, been I, since that I, you one know game? <laughs> I, do, I do like how you say, you know, he has to earn his spot, right? Blah, blah, blah. But, bro, we're talking about raising the ceiling. And, B, bro, this guy's been playing through injury when he has no years left on his contract. I'm pretty sure that means he's kind of earned his spot. He doesn't even know these guys, but he's willing to go to war for these guys. You know what I'm saying? I think Lindholm has earned it. And he's a bit bigger than Hoaglander, too. Get him in front of the net. Dude, if Lindholm gets going on the power play, a couple more bounces go his way. You know how confidence is, bro. We've talked about confidence many times, Trevor Beggs, on our private conversations, okay? I'm way better in bed when I'm confident. I last way longer when I'm in the shower before it's go, go time and I'm telling myself that I got this. Right now, Lindholm, playing with Niels Amon, is not feeling himself. And I'm curious to see what version of Lindholm is displayed to the masses on this side of the world when he's feeling himself. And it's so crucial, again, for the Vancouver Canucks and their top six to get going. And a confident Lindholm is, in my opinion, the answer there. 
Now, don't get me wrong. A Hoaglander deserves more looks and whatnot and just a lot more love. But Lindholm, man, he I, he's he's the ingredient here, man. He really is. And, and now Canucks fans, I think uh, there was like this poll question on like Sakaris and Price about, oh, would you do the Lindholm trade again? Obviously not. Straight up. But no, ser- like P.O. Suter and Lindholm are doing the exact same things right now. But there's a silver lining in that statement. Like, again, the Canucks are doing pretty good right now. This whole defensive structure playoff hockey type of ish that they're doing, game in and game out, that's going to translate in the playoffs. The Canucks are going to be in playoff series, and they're going to be in games, and they're going to have a chance to win playoff series because of how they're playing defensively. But man, oh man, you you brought up the term X-Factor, Lindholm. I didn't think of that. If he gets going, the Canucks are going to be unstoppable. IMO. Because it's going to coincide again with how they're playing defensively. Real talk. Come on, Trevor, man. He's got he's to earn it. Bro, you calling sick when, you're, when your head is hurting, when you got a headache, and you don't have Advil in the house, okay? You calling sick. This guy doesn't have a contract. He's playing for your Vancouver Canucks. He's got to earn it? That's uh, that's fake news from Kyle Bowen over there. Um, let us know in the comments, again, whether you're watching us live here on YouTube, whether you're listening on pod, wherever you're listening, let us know in the comments what you think. Who should be the fifth and final ingredient on PP1 for your Vancouver Canucks? And do you agree with Begsy? Do you agree with Bowen? Or do you disagree with both of us, man? Ooh, that's the spiciest one there is. Uh, let us yeah. know wherever you listen to podcasts. Trevor, um, yeah, can I can ask you one thing? Can, do you have like two minutes to do a little bit of research for me before we, we sign out just for our fans? Sure. Okay, so you know how Jeff Patterson said the Canucks in their last 31 games have dropped a whole goal per game hmm. in comparison to what they were doing during their first 41 games. It went from 3.9 goals per game to 2.94 over our last 30, 31 games. Where, where mm-hmm. does that 2.9 rank amongst the rest of the league? Because I'm I'm pretty sure like the whole league has kind of locked it down, you know? You get yeah, what I'm so saying? I was, I was running the numbers on this last night when I was doing my writer for Daily Hive. And, and basically I was looking at, you know, pre and post all-star break, you know, after the in home trade. So right now the Canucks, since the all-star break, have 2.83 goals per game. Ugh. That is 23rd overall oh. in the NHL. Okay, if you look Pedersen, at- Miller, Besser, Quinn Hughes, Philip Heronic. That's a, that's a weird number, dude. Look at the bottom 10. Hey, hey, even. Oh, yeah. The bottom 10. The Canucks are the only playoff team in the bottom 10 right now in terms of goals for per game since the All-Star break. Okay. That's not great. Oh, that's not great. And the fact of the matter is they're not shooting the puck a lot either. So, again, my biggest scrape with the Vancouver Canucks to tie it back into – how we started off saying the Canucks are the most boring team in the league. You know, the Canucks are 24th overall in shots, 23rd overall in goals since the All-Star break. Both of those things need to improve because this ain't the Canucks of October where they're scoring on 15 to 20% of their shots. You need to create your own luck come playoff time. And right now the Canucks are just not creating enough of their own luck. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for that, man. Thanks for put. Uh, I had to put you on the spot because I was just trying to, like, understand – I don't want to like poo poo on the Canucks totally if again the whole league is scoring less over the last 31 games because these games matter more, meaningful games, uh, more defense gets played, blah blah blah. But uh by the sounds of it, not nah, it's just quite obvious, man. The Canucks they have to get better. Bro, we're not the St. Louis Blues or the Minnesota Wild, you know what I'm saying? At the top of the standings and like doing our thing, well structured, playing defensive hockey, picking up points in the regular season, boom, bam, right? Because you know, you, you teams can do that. But the fact of the matter is that the Canucks have s- legit superstar talent, and outside of the structure and getting that stuff down, I would love to see these last ten games be used in a way where they're leaning on again the the fun and creativity amongst those superstar players to get the job done because. That adds another layer to how the Vancouver Canucks can beat you in the playoffs. Anyways, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, Locked on Canucks. You know what? I want to apologize for not getting uh, to a lot of the comments. Uh, me and Beggsy were just nerding out here, okay? We were. Anyways, Anthem is saying that he would say Hoaglander gets my PP vote because he's proven he wants it more. Uh, yeah. I guess uh, it is what Great it is. Great take. Great take. It is what it is. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more tomorrow, and we'll get to the comments more tomorrow. Uh, we love you, man. Go Canucks, go. Uh, no offense, but the Vancouver Canucks need to shoot the puck more. Uh, don't worry, though. It's going to happen. And uh, the Canucks are still, in my opinion, Stanley Cup favorites, even after a loss against the boring LA Kings, bro. If the LA Kings win the Cup, hockey is doomed, bro. Ping pong is going to be more popular 
than hockey in North America if the Kings win the cup. Yep. Uh, stop LA at all costs. And speaking of stopping, we got to stop right now here on Locked On Canucks. Okay. Shout out to the everydayers, the occasional listeners, the first time listeners. Oh, baby, the new subscribers. And those of you who join us on the live YouTube show, we love each and every one of you, your families, and your dogs too. Special shout out to the fans that have joined us over on the Discord as well for a lot more Canucks talk and with a more raw and honest version of Begsy and Bowen, okay? But no worries. We've got to keep it coming here on Locked On Canucks because it's your Canucks every day. Don't forget, okay? And tomorrow, Kyle, one of the things I want to talk about is Phil Peronik, okay? Because this guy has not been the same player of late that he was earlier in the season. So, oh, man. Uh, maybe, You're such an oh, asshole, dude. You're such man, an asshole. Did you see him lay the, bo- you saw him lay the body yesterday? Like Not, not yesterday, a couple days it. ago. Like he, he was doing it like... Anyways, let's, man. Let's talk about Hater, it tomorrow, man. man. Let's talk about it tomorrow on Locked On Canucks. But for now, I'm Dark Guy Banksy. That's Kyle Bowen. Ooh. And you've been listening to Locked On Canucks. Happy birthday, JS, man. Go Canucks, go. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network.